All right. Welcome, Pam, to your three P's interview. As we were just discussing, you're normally the one doing the interviewing. So I'm really yeah. excited to put you into the, the other seat today. Are you looking yeah. forward to it? Yeah, yeah, really good. Just sit back, relax and, and, and go for it. Exactly. I know. Maybe I'll try to really bring my interview game. So you can yeah, okay. something to all the interviews you do. No pressure, no pressure. Exactly. I was thinking earlier, I need to like watch Oprah. I feel like she's probably the best interviewer of all time. So I'll yeah. try to take some cues from her. Just channel, channel her energy. I love it. Here for it. Please smile and wave. Yeah. But, <laughs> <laughs> so happy to have you on, Cam. Uh, Thank you're you for having me. Inspiring, of course. Yeah. And I feel like you, Ben and Brody are the trio. It would be rude not to have, <laughs> not have a third. <laughs> fair, fair. Three so for you so we're going to yeah. run you through philosophy priorities and purpose so essentially yeah. i was thinking about it earlier you know how you did the betterment project little plug yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> your episode about mental models uh so essentially yeah. this is my mental model that i've created over the years awesome. philosophy awesome. is around getting your mind right priorities yeah. is going out into the world and making it happen and yeah. then purpose is about how can we contribute beyond ourselves so yeah I love it let's get into it yeah cool take it away okay so the first question is regarding trusting the universe the question yeah. I have for you is do you believe that everything happens for a reason I do yeah definitely I think like um there's always that kind of crossover between like like I know especially in, in like a goal setting context that crossover between like you planning your goals and then like just life kind of having its fun way of working things out. I think you kind of just got to be able to like roll with the punches. Um, so for whatever like higher power, power it is, yeah, I definitely think that there's, there's like a rough plan. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I'd love for you to go into the story because I know you've been with Crystal Book for over six months now. Yeah. Wow, actually that's been six months since our walk, that means. Yeah, that's crazy. crazy. Wow. Yeah. Uh, but I remember a conversation we had was that you were considering what your next steps were and yeah. you had just gone come back from holiday. Was that right? And you were having yeah. and you were thinking, what are you gonna do? And then that's when the Crystal Brook yeah. opportunity and how it just kind of fell into place. Tell us about that. Yeah, it was really, really interesting. It was like um I could like spent the um the, the Christmas holidays kind of doing like my my 12 month, my five month plan, uh or 12 month and then like five year plan, just kind of like roughly having that structure of, of you know what I want to achieve for myself, where I want to go. Um, and then I kind of got one month into January, and this this um, opportunity presented itself with with Crystal Brook, which was again a full circle moment because I I um, applied for Crystal Brook um, in my internship for my first year uni, um, and did, didn't end up getting that. And then um, yeah, three years later, or four 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 and a half years later, ended up um, working there. So. Um, and then that just completely changed everything. And then over the last six months, it's been a little bit of a roller coaster with like the podcast and then work and stuff, all all highs, all really, really great. Uh, but it's just crazy how how quickly life can change. Oh, and has it been everything that you imagined? Because I spoke to you right at the beginning. So what yeah. is it now six months in? It's crazy. Like still, I'm like, I'm really lucky. I've got like a really great team and a really great manager, but um, just still on a daily basis, like continually to like grow and learn and just like really I feel like evolve as like a professional and then it was also like in my personal life as well too um it just yeah so many opportunities to just keep bettering myself oh you're killing it it was so made for you I definitely yeah. feel like the universe like had its plan with a hundred percent that worked out well yeah it definitely did so now yeah. we're moving into gratitude it sounds yeah. like you're just overflowing with good vibes which we yeah love. Always. So the question is, what do you love about living in Cairns? Because I know there was a time where you were considering relocating. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So um, again, like at, at the beginning of the year, when I was kind of looking at my plan, I wanted to try and either get like down to the sunny coast or the Gold Coast, um, just because I, I think I was just really keen on that change. I wanted, I wanted some kind of change, and obviously the universe had it had its way, and that change ended up being a new position. Um, but yeah, no, I obviously I'm um, born in Cairns, been here for, for almost 23 years now. Um, and I just love it here. I really, really do. Like I had the friends that moved away. They went to uni. I had the opportunity to, but um, it really just like opportunities here kept presenting themselves. 
Um, and like I, I love Cairns, I've got really good friends and, and family here. And as long as the opportunities are still here, I, I think, yeah, I'll, I'll be here for the, for the short term. Long-term. Exactly. It is what you make it. Hey. It's yeah, a hundred percent. Because now we live in this digital world, you can have meetings with New York, yeah. or like, still be in a lot more accessible. Your family. Yeah. So, it opens it up a lot. Yeah, so cool. And, okay, if you had to pick, where's your favourite place in Cairns? For me, it's Crystal Cascades. What, yeah. What you? Oh, that's really good. It's always going to be the beach for me. So probably, like, Palm Cove, I think, either Trinity or Palm Cove. Yeah. That's yeah. the thing that always puts me off about, like, moving to, like, a big city. I couldn't imagine, like, not being within, like, 15, 20 minutes of a beach. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Yeah, love, love the beach. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's so beautiful, isn't it? When you go on a Saturday and you see all the oh. weddings and the fairy lights and the trees, it's, it's just cool. like it's just like an energy. It's just like it's it's so good, so so good. So yeah, here mm-hmm. for it. Yeah, you're such a brand ambassador for Cam. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Tourism. <laughs> oh, absolutely. And yeah, just so much to be grateful for. And I guess with the universe, like thank you for bringing these things into our lives and we least expect. Yeah kind of like taking care of us in a way that we can't even control sure. it's awesome yeah definitely amazing well let's get into goals I know this is yeah. a big focus in your life you do a lot of journaling a lot of I guess like reflection and you're very intentional so yeah. really looking forward to hearing what your current vision is of course it always changes but yes yeah. next five years what what do you want your life to look like yeah, definitely. I think um, really in the last 12 months, it's gone from um, kind of just purely focused on like my professional development, my career to just more of like a whole picture um, and looking at life uh, as that that full full picture. So um, looking at like my friends, my family, like my work-life balance, my quality of life, still having those really ambitious and motivated goals, but also like taking on the podcast and having like side projects and just other things that I can be passionate about and and work towards. Um, I think the big thing in that has been like that reflecting. So like um, like being really really grateful, but also seeing that you know there's always more more to life, um, and just trying to look at it from other perspectives. I know we were talking about um, it on our on our Sunday episode where we're um, looking at like what position we play in other people's lives. So I think it's really easy to like channel that main character energy and just be like oh like you know how does this serve me or what can I do for for other people I think lately we've really been reflecting on like oh what what position do I play in someone else's life so am I you know someone to make them smile am I mentoring someone am I a friend you know um so it's been something that's probably been on on my mind a little bit lately so elite I need to watch well rather listen to the episode yeah guys I'm not gonna lie your podcast, I was expecting great things. Three yeah. different guys put them in a room. Magic is bound to happen. Yeah. But the level of content that you've been serving is well above what I could have even dreamed. Like truly. Yeah. Really I appreciate cool. that. Thank you. Heaps. You're proud of yourself. Yeah, it's been it's been really, really fun. Really good. How much time do you put into it to get it to up to scratch? Oh, so much. Really? I feel like initially like we didn't bite off more than we can chew, but like it seems so accessible and easy. And like there is a bit of a barrier to entry. And so like you see all these like Hollywood people or influencers like can just throw money at it. And so you can get a producer, you can get the equipment, you can have the editors and things like that. But like oh. grassroots starting up and Ben is pretty much an audio e- engineer at this point. And then <laughs> obviously we already had um, Brody being in um, really strong with the marketing um but yeah just like a lot a lot going into it like creating that brand and things like that creating yeah uh, learning her so hey. massive which has been like a testament to we're talking about self-development and we're all like developing and learning through this process itself yes uh, so i feel like that's a testament to it within itself yeah exactly it's huge isn't i think that's one of the reasons why i wanted to start this interview series is because yeah. i feel like we're so used to consuming other people's content yeah really important to step into the creator role because that's where you learn the most and you also yeah. build a relationship with the person as opposed yeah. to being a bystander so 100 no i like that that's a really really great perspective i think also too it's like a really fun 
like outlet, especially if your career is not super creative and it's quite process driven or, or fundamental. I think mm -hmm. having an outlet like like even I've, like I've been running like with um, Brady the the Instagram for betterment. So I've been like on Canva and like creating like things, and it's just fun to have something else to kind of like give into. Nice. Yeah. Well, you do it behind the billboard, or was that Brody? <laughs> that was Brody. Can't take credit for that one. That was all, all him. That was <laughs> wizard. Okay. Yeah. Really. Yeah. I, he also, I remember a couple of years ago, he edited a photo for the Cairns Young Chamber. And yeah. I'm not sure if you ever heard the story because it like no. went around our committee at the time. Yeah. And he edited this amazing sunset in one of the photos, and yeah. everyone knew it was real. Yeah. He showed us the photo and it was like a cloudy night and nobody even picked it up. Like he's amazing. He literally never ceases to amaze me. He's just like such a great person to have in my circle. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You okay. guys have become so close and it's only been what a couple of years and you two oh, are really well fond at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's awesome. Really, really great people to have around. Oh, I love it. All right. Moving swiftly along to priorities. Yep. So the first one is do what feels good. So the question yeah. I had, I have a feeling I might know the answer, but you feel free to surprise me. Yeah. What's something that you feel really proud of yourself for? Um, this is funny because we've spoken about this before. Mm. Like I feel like the basic answer everyone's going to go to is like gym and like career and things like that. Mm -hmm. But more so than that is like I'm really, really proud of like where I am in life currently, but the people around me, I think like friend, like good quality friendships with people that are going to make you like better at the end of the day are mm -hmm. really hard to find. And it's like dating, but like when you're mm -hmm. dating, you just have to find one person, but yeah. find a whole circle of people that all click together, that are all like have goals and values and things that align is really, really difficult. Yeah. And I think like, this is like the first time in my life where I can really like genuinely look around my circle, probably like four or five people and just be really proud of like where we are. Uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll probably say my circle at the moment. That's, that's yeah. The, boat. Yeah, the biggest oh, one. Epic. It's one of the benefits of being in our 20s, hey? You yeah. Trying to figure out who you are and then you attract people who are like you. But before we like didn't know who we were trying to no. figure it out. So it was a lot hard to find. 100% and like I feel like just like it also takes like time and effort and energy and it's not just something you kind of just like stumble into like when you think like putting yourself out in the, in the networking events like if, if you never right. went to that you wouldn't be there and then just like the the constant thing of like hanging out and checking in and and like it's full-time job social life's a big deal <laughs> big social life so I can't even imagine because yeah. Yeah. Do you have like a schedule, a calendar for everyone's birthdays? That's something I struggle with is remembering yeah. everyone's birthdays. What do you do? Just use Facebook. No, I, I let, yeah, Facebook come in clutch on that one. If you ever get a birthday message, bang on 901 for me because no. they come on that one for sure. Elite. Yeah, because no. it's good to be able to like proactively plan and celebrate no. friends' birthdays like that little bit more. So it's something yeah. I'm trying to be a bit more ahead of the game so I can get a nice gift or organize a nice dinner or something to really yeah. make it special. I think like, and the, like, I think the smallest thing is just like, like that message or like posting that photo and just like for someone to know that you've taken time out of your day and you're thinking about them is like a really, really big one to me. I, I think it's one of the further questions which we'll circle back around to, but yeah. Oh, no, it makes it such a big difference, hey? Yeah. If everyone were to think, oh, no, like my small message here doesn't matter, then yeah. they end up with none. And no, yeah. birthday. <laughs> yeah. no, that's a really good point. Awesome. So now we're moving into health. Yeah. So I know this is a big part of your life. And I in yeah. initially had the question I was going to chat about recipes, but yeah. I think I can do better than that. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. I would love to hear more about your journey because I know you've posted a few progress shots and more yeah. so how you feel like your relationship with the gym and nutrition or just health in general has evolved over the last couple of years because I know you're in a really great place with it now. So tell me about yeah. that. Yeah, so mine, my like initial goal is like every little 17-year-old boy just wants big muscles, six-pack, <laughs> the girls look at him. Um, yeah. 
So <laughs> we're just going to be so honest about the, about that from the start. Yeah. Um, and then it kind of, as I was going through uni, it was a bit of like a stress reliever. So mm-hmm. like being, um, taking, like using it as a study break and things like that. And just to kind of um, have that time to just kind of like switch off. Mm-hmm. And the more I started progressing academically and professionally, and the more that's going on up in my head, it was more like that hour of a day where I just put my music in, I'm training, and like there is not a single thought floating around in my brain. It is just blank. Mm-hmm. It's the closest I'll ever be to meditating and really being able to keep my mind like literally blank, not a, not a single thought going through it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then throughout, um, kind of like since since I graduated and been working professionally, it's been like more of a focus on the benefits I have on my mental health that come from focusing on my physical health. Mm. So like between either stress or like um, anxiety or all those little bits and pieces, um, gym has been like a massive outlet for me. And between like, um, I feel like that's like, yeah, like uh, working with like the anxiety and stress and things like that too, but also the positive side is like getting the serotonin and, and all that thing, like being able to kind of like Mental body change. hack a little bit. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. so like um, like training in the – like I'll, I'll train before work now, so I'll, I'll go gym and then I'm starting work with this, you know, throw a bit of caffeine, bit of serotonin and oh. such a high, which is <laughs> I think like why I'm kind of known for is having that really high energy because I feel like I, I try to utilise that, you know, successfully um but it's all just about balance like for me it's it's not been like i want to be the biggest person or the fittest or like have the most beautiful circular abs <laughs> in the room it's just about like um it's just a, a element of my life i know my quality of life is at its best when i'm being fit and healthy so just trying to maintain that yeah and almost like having that stability as well yeah like, routine. You know, okay when things get stressful you've got that safe space that. Gym to like fall back on has yeah. there ever been like a period of time like whether it be like a couple of weeks or a couple of months that yeah. you fell off completely and you just like didn't go that it became laborious and a chore that you avoid yeah, yeah well so i've always like like re- pretty much since i was 17 i've trained at least like at bare minimum like two or three times a week so every good. week for the last like five years but the big thing will be like my nutrition so like how i'm eating Mm. um it's always kind of easy to just hide I'm like oh yeah I'm, I'm just bulking like it's fine I've just got a little <laughs> extra exercise on but I know when like um like when I was in my relationship it was mm. like really easy just to kind of skip the nutrition like date night you go out and you're doing that a couple times a week and just really things slide through um mm-hmm. and then like post relationship it's always you know great energy just to kind of clean up the eating throw some, throw some extra cardio in um mm-hmm. and just kind of tighten things up a little bit um so that's probably the only time it's ever really slipped but as far as like training i've always been like really consistent with that so inspiring i completely agree with you though it's interesting how a relationship like changes that side of things yeah you go out so much more you eat just so much more and you're so like comfortable with the person and just chill yeah yeah and i think though too that should be like the sign of a good relationship that you can still maintain those goals and that lifestyle and that routine together like sure. kind of you're growing together not growing apart mm-hmm. um i think that's always like a really good marker for it mm-hmm. yeah i agree but yeah. i think it's something like i don't know about you but for me yeah. like i kind of like learned that through my first relationship 100 oh, percent. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. i it's wouldn't been... do it right the first time no and it like that's the whole part of being like young is like you're learning from your mistakes the only mistake if you you know make the same error twice yeah exactly yeah. yeah amazing well thank you for sharing that because i i've just been so curious your yeah. consistency is admirable truly yeah but it's like it's not like it's so selfish because it's like yeah. i know if i go do this like workout mm-hmm. now i'm gonna have a massive hit of serotonin i'm gonna be on cloud nine for like the next three hours mm-hmm. so it's just like just earning that kind of that positive chemical release yeah for sure i think it's all about like where your mind space is at yeah i have like been through years of my life like a couple of years yeah. ago i was like 5 a.m gym like yeah. just would hike up mountains 15 times in one yeah. just very yeah. and then i went through seasons where i almost like 
well, I did completely neglect exercise, but I resented yeah. it. And it became like something that I was like really scared of. Yeah. And, I think it's just, it just yeah. depends where you are in your life. I think it, at yeah. the end of the day, it needs to come down to like what your like motivation is. Like if you're just doing it to like, yeah, your why. Like if you're just like, oh, I'm not happy with my body or how I look, da, 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 it can be like that really negative mindset. But if you're doing it because like, I love the way I feel after a workout or I love the process. It's that, like, not that. It's the journey. It's not, like, the destination. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So fall in love with the process. Love it. And yeah. so wise. And so true. And now that I've started running again, like, oh, my goodness, I love this so much. I can't believe yeah. it. Run as high. Yes, exactly. Yeah. It's so true. And then you forget. Yeah. You're like, if this is the best thing ever, now it's your favourite part of your day again. And Yeah. And that's what I love. Like everything's going to be different for different people. Like one of my goals probably last time we spoke was I, I want to run a um, marathon mm -hmm. or a half marathon this year. Yeah, was. And I was, yeah, and I was running and I was like, I genuinely hate this. Like it's just not for me. Like I could do it and I was getting better at it, but there was not like a single time where I really enjoyed it. And mm -hmm. I was like, like it was that really like that grind, like that David Goggins, like just do it anyway, you're going to get through it. And I was like, I hate this. Why am I doing it? And I was like, I'm still like fit and healthy throughout my lifestyle. And like, I'll have my challenges where I'll like, I did like the Movember, like I ran 60K and then the push up challenge and like 75 hard yeah, and all that. that. Yeah. And it's okay for like a month or two just to like kind of like prove to yourself you can do it. But I was like, I'm not, yeah, not, not signing up like six to 12 months of my life for something I hate. Exactly. And that's the thing, right? It's what feels good. Yeah. Okay sound good yeah i run a marathon that sounds good yeah if it doesn't feel good to you instinctively then it's 100 yeah that's, it's for someone else you do that's the, where you, like the your ego comes in you've got to have like a really vulnerable kind of reflection of like am i doing this for me or because i want to tell people i did it love it yeah. yes so self-aware love it awesome okay now we're moving into korea so yeah. another big area of our life, the one that takes up the most time right. in life yeah. and break space. So the question I had, of course, you're relatively new into your role, but I'd love yeah. to know which part of it has been the most challenging so far. So I I went from being um, in a really small boutique like consulting firm. So mm -hmm. I was probably working with like like six consultants to wow. working for like this massive um hotel I don't like call it a hotel chain but this big really big organization mm -hmm. and so for, for my role I'm responsible for the recruitment for the three hotels in Cairns mm -hmm. so each hotel will probably have like five heads of departments that I'm working with on a daily basis to like service their and support those recruitment needs mm -hmm. so I had to go and learn about like 15 people's different personalities their different communication styles their preferences their unconscious biases, like all these little really finite details. Um, so I really struggled with that at the start because I have a particular communication style. Like I'm really open, honest, vulnerable, um, and really comfortable with that. But mm -hmm. I had to learn how to work with different personalities, which has just been like the, it started off as such a difficult thing, but it's come out to be the most like beneficial thing ever. Um, so yeah could not be more happy that that was a challenge I had to face um, cool. but learn from it. Yeah, no, that's amazing. And yeah. now you would be able to just navigate it when new people come oh, along and yeah. what a good skill to have, hey? They so much time and, like, I know, like, sometimes they got to give people a little bit of time to sit on things. Like, some people need, like, more support than others. Some people are alone more. Like, it's <laughs> learning those relationships that kind of ends up building, like, that respect and kind of elevates like your status within your role in your business and then garners that respect. So it's been obviously like a quite a long-term goal that we're, we're working towards. Killing it, killing yeah. it. How do yeah. you find, I have to ask, cause I know you're surrounded by people so much and you yeah. deal with a lot of people within your role and even on your social side. How yeah. do you manage like all of that energy? Do yeah. You, yeah. So I think that like I am, an extrovert in the truest form of the definition nice. so like <laughs> i will be absolutely like and i like i found this with Brody a lot initially when we were hanging out like it would get to friday night and i've just worked like a 50 hour week whatever plus gym plus side projects and things like that and my brain would just be dead 
And then the second I saw him, like I was just straight through the roof, vibing like over energy, like like a fucking like ten year old running around on sugar. Oh, good. <laughs> uh, so so good, and it just happens like again and again. So I really feel like I am such like an emotive person that really gets energy from other people, mm-hmm. and that's why again I value my circle so much because like I'm going to mirror the people around me because I'm so emotive. So if mm-hmm. people are around me are happy and they're motivated and they're positive influences, um, it's, I really feel like I, I feed off it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I probably need literally like between an hour to 45 minutes a day to myself. And then that's- after that, I'm good to go. It's so, <laughs> and that's literally my gym. I'll do my gym by myself, by yeah. myself. And then after that, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm in go mode. Yeah. You're definitely in the right job. <laughs> yeah. Okay, <laughs> In the right line of work. Yeah. I, if we traded lives for a week, it would be so interesting. Like have, from home, living. In I was going to say that. One. Yeah. Like completely opposite. Yeah. It would just be so funny if we traded lives. <laughs> I literally, I work like I worked from home maybe two times mm-hmm. in the last six months, and it's gone to like five o'clock. I'm sitting at the door waiting for one of my roommates to come oh. home. Like. Talk to me, talk to me. How was your day? This is how my day was. Like, yeah. insane. Or I'll be texting them. I'm like, oh, hey, I'm going to cook dinner. Like, what do you want? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That just yeah, I don't know how you do it. Honestly, literally. And I always try to go for places where, like, I know the housemate isn't going to be there a lot of the time. And, like, yeah. when they come, I'm like, oh, yes, like, I've got my own space. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy where the opposite in that way. Yeah. And it's funny, too, because, like, so I've, I live with uh, – have you met um, Cameron Beeling? Yes, I yeah. have. Uh-huh. So I live with him and he's literally like a carbon copy, exact same person as me. Really? So, yeah, we we'll like feed off each other. Like, oh, hey, like, let's go to our groceries. Let's go do our washing. Like, um, yeah, it worked, worked out really well. Wow, you're the definition of an extrovert. <laughs> yeah, as, as in its truest form to like, if there's a spectrum, I'm like way yeah. off. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, well, I feel like it'd be interesting to meet in the middle, you know, because there are benefits to both sides. hundred percent. And, like, that's something that I'm always, like, trying to work on is, like, learning Mm. from – obviously learning from other people and just, like, having those really honest kind of reflections. Like, there's there's Mm. always growing and things you can do. Mm Mm-hmm. Perfect. Okay. Well, now we can move into home. So I guess yeah. you touched on it. You're living yeah. with your friend. Is it just you and Cam, or is I've there- got two, two other roommates? So yeah, got, nice. got, and they're both um, teachers, which is I think why they handle us so well because they're very, very patient. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're good with like a lot of energy and yeah, and like little kids with ADHD. So it's perfect. <laughs> Worked exactly. out so well. Oh, and which area are you in? So we're out at uh, Bayview Heights. Yeah, nice. Yeah. So you have little, you? yeah, it is really nice. I'm just sitting out the front at the moment, having a look at it. Oh, um, cool. but a little bit further from the beach than than I'd like. But um, yeah, we'll try and get a little closer in the next house. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Well, I've got that place that's almost finished in Smithfield, so yeah, I'm gonna no, well, house warming. So you'll have to come with Ben. Very good. Yeah, lock it in. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Exactly. Okay, so the question I had with home is yep. do you have an idea of what next big per- your next big purchase will be i think it'll probably be i'm planning a europe trip next year oh i think nice. that'll be the next bigish one um and then there'll be like a uh, like investment property like a pretty much like what you've done in an apartment but uh, that's not until 2020 end of 2025 early 2026 so it's still i've got a little bit a little bit of time up my sleeve Yes, got to go yeah. to Europe first. Got yeah, to- priorities, priorities. Travel, then then we can find something. Like, what has happened this year? I swear every single person that I know. Everyone. Everyone is over there. Yeah. Like, any other year, this is the year where everyone's like. Do it. And they're not there at the moment. They're going next year. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. Everyone's going to meet up in Europe next year. Mm-hmm. Gosh, I got to, I think I got to book a ticket. Because, like, I don't want to have phone yeah. in years in a row. Like, that's yeah. Enough. We can't. It's, it's no it's terrible. I could never. <laughs> that's the limit. Yeah, for sure. That's yeah. definitely something to like work towards. Hey, it's such a good. You like, have to. You know, yeah. you're working towards something. And I think even for me, like the like the growth that you get from like 
going to another country and like um just like it's like solo travel or just travel in general is is insane it, it's exponential yeah, yeah. Exactly. i'm gonna ask you more about adventure yeah a little bit but the yeah. next is love so the question i had is when do you feel most loved what's your love language my love language is all of them <laughs> i love love why um, not <laughs> yeah you have to um my i feel most loved when someone follows up to check in on me mm. so like if i say like oh like I had, had a really bad day at work and then someone texts me like, you know, a week later, like, hey, is work feeling good? Or like, how to like hurt my shoulder or like, how's your back feeling? Da, da, da. Just those really like little things, they mm -hmm. get me so much. Because to think that like someone is like living a really busy life, really chaotic and like they've taken time out of their day to think about you and then like message you, that mm -hmm. just, that does it to me all the time. I think my friends know that because that's how they'll all like message me and, and follow up. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know whether that's like like acts of service, like a little a little follow up text mm. that gets me gets me each time. Or words of no, it's not words of affirmation. Yeah, it's kind of. I'd say it's like a mix between the two of them. Well, it makes the sense why you and Brody are so close because Brody is the king of. King. Yeah. Like, he's so good. Um, <laughs> yeah, I spent all my like I, we yeah. we went on Saturday night. I just got a little text from from Alex in the morning, like, "Hey, mate, how'd you pull up?" I was like terrible but thanks for asking <laughs> oh it's funny when you were talking you were like disappearing you were coming oh in well okay lighting's I'll, changed I'll just get the light on real quick nice oh. are you in like a zen buddhist room or is that like a, oh, no it's an office i was thinking yeah. like a few different vibes here yeah i got the plants plants is plants yeah. is dead. we can work with that yeah exactly right yeah perfect so the question i had around adventure yeah is if i was feeling really generous and i yeah. you a flight to anywhere in the world where yeah. would you go i would go to canada oh because my brother has just moved there um oh. so he left um for like probably in like a month now um mm -hmm. he moved over there for work um and like i've like he's been in cairns like his whole life um he's just moved over there moved over there with work so I'm, go go canada and, and, and give him a visit check yeah. in see how he's doing definitely where in canada yeah. is he he is in uh toronto oh yeah exciting uh, yeah he's 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 living his best life yeah good on him right then well, there you go. You'll have to add a Canada leg to your Europe trip. Somewhere. I'll throw it in somewhere. Exactly. Maybe a little Christmas trip. Exactly. Trip to see how the, how the savings are doing. Yeah, it's just, you know, across the water. Just, yeah, just, just the pond, across, they... across the pond. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay, three questions left. So we're yep. moving to the purpose. So this is really yep. trying to get outside of ourselves and help others, which is, of course, you've been doing really well with the podcast yeah yeah so the first question i had um i originally had the question of what is your favorite thing to do alone but i feel yeah. like we, no we haven't touched on this yeah. i did ask you earlier yeah maybe dive into that a little bit what's your favorite thing to do alone um be with other people <laughs> <laughs> no i um i really like um i like training by myself like jim's always a really good one mm. um I love just just driving out to the beach. I think that's one of the things I've really valued about like being single and like living out of home and things like that is like if I want to just get up on a Saturday morning and just drive out to the beach and just sit on the beach for two hours, yeah. don't have to tell anyone where I'm going. I just have that full full freedom. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love that. So it'd probably be either um yeah chucking on a podcast and just going for a nice drive. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Hey, is there any question that you want people to ask you more that I can ask? Oh, uh, I think just more questions to like get to know me. Hmm. I think it's really easy with like social media and like mm -hmm. this obviously cans being small, so word of mouth to like form opinions about people. Mm -hmm. um, and I think just like if you can take the time of day to not just me but just someone in general spend five ten minutes of actually having like a genuine deep conversation with them 
um, you will learn so much, they'll learn so much, and it's just a really beneficial exercise for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, I, I think just, um, yes, yeah, spending more time asking genuine questions yeah. and, and actively listening to the to the answers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we're doing it, Case and Yeah, <laughs> we're here for the second time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. This is like an extended version of what we should all do more often. Volume two, yeah. Our calendar would be very full if we did an hour slot every a lot of calendar invites going out there exactly like, like that's sure. also too it's so easy to just like i know like even the week can be busy but like just a dinner after work or a walk on the esplanade after work coffee like we do have a fair bit of free time and in, in social life and it, you can spend it you know sitting watching netflix all weekend or you could you know spend 20 minutes of it getting to know someone mm -hmm. Yeah. So many people out there to, to meet and to, exactly. to learn from. And it all plants seeds for, you know, relationships that might sprout or yeah. where it's mutually beneficial or just like having that human connection where you realise that we're all going through the same rhythms yeah. of life and we yeah. want to support one another. We've all got good ideas. We can, like, collaborate right. and try to live our best lives together. Yeah, and normalise if you're not enjoying it. Be like, all right. I'm going to head off, see you later. Yeah. It's okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. We're definitely not all meant to vibe. No, like, 100%. <laughs> well, the world would be boring if we're all, all, all the same. Yeah, exactly. I guess this is actually a question I've been curious to ask you as well. I'm going a little yeah. off topic, but we're almost no, at the end. Right. Have you ever felt rejection? Because I know you have such a big social circle. Yeah ever been through seasons of your life where you you feel rejection and how do you deal with that yeah 100 percent. i don't think like i think it's been the biggest thing for my growth and my development mm -hmm. i think like the way i always say is like with with your comfort zone so like i want like one of the feedbacks and one of like my strengths a lot of people will say it's like just like my confidence and like my ability to like put myself out there mm -hmm. and like that just comes through time and experience like my my favorite favorite quote is um by Hel alex formosi i say all the time um confidence is not screaming affirmations in the mirror it's by having a stack of undeniable proof that you are who you say you are and just that like that just that stack of proof so like each mm -hmm. time just slowly slowly widening your comfort zone um mm -hmm. is like amazing and that like if you're only doing it in baby steps if you do face rejection it's not rejection is not a bad thing it's just learning from it mm -hmm. um so you know you miss 100 percent of the shots you don't shoot so yes. yeah i i welcome rejection i love it because it just means that i'm trying and that i'm learning oh powerful i yeah. welcome rejection i love I it because yeah I if, 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 you're, mm. if you're not failing you're not trying I'm just going to sure. just, just keep trying to quote that. Yeah, there's so <laughs> many rattling around up in here. We're now in a social setting, though, so not so yeah. much failure of an outcome in a social yeah, setting. Yeah, time. Yeah. Or, yeah, so, like, like um on, on Saturday, I went down to Esplanade, I was playing, playing some yeah. volleyball. I walked up some backpackers, like, oh, hey, guys, do you need an extra? Can I play with you? And they're like, no, yeah. I'm okay. I was like, that's oh, so yeah. fine. Turn around, walked away. And, like, like there's so many times where I've just tried to strike up conversations in coffee shops with people and they're just not vibing it. And that's so okay. Like, you know, yeah. time and place. Um, but yeah, I think it just, it just builds that, that confidence and that ability to, to get better at it. And in the, my, my favorite thing is just like, once you zoom out and look at it from a macro perspective, like mm -hmm. nothing really, it's, it's Bill nihilism. like nothing really matters at the end of the day. Like it's one mm -hmm. tiny little thing in life like you're gonna survive oh i'm so glad i asked you that question yeah that's such a good mindset and yeah. i can feel that that is truly how you approach the, that situation yeah for sure gosh that is we can all learn from that because that's something that i really struggle with is i yeah. take it very personal and then i just i almost like carry that on my back when i'm going into yeah. social setting so yeah. i I'm really glad I asked. I'm going to be trying to channel that. Yeah. When, yeah. Like, I just think that, like, the things that you think back and, and send, you know, shudders down your spine or, or give you goosebumps or something, I can yeah. promise you not a single other person remembers or even cares about. Like, it's mm -hmm. just so, just, yeah. 
welcome oh, yeah. welcome <laughs> rejection that yeah. is gold absolutely yeah. gold so that. cool okay copyright it <laughs> exactly <laughs> right that will be the next betterment project branding yeah <laughs> or the, the next, next project, potentially yeah but, Okay, so the next component is moving into inspire, inspiring. So I'd love to hear how yeah. your parents inspire you. Yeah, awesome. So um, I was I was thinking about this one a little bit. Um, and so I would say, like, mum always is, like, been very, like, caring and understanding and being able to, like, take on, like, the emotions of others. Mm-hmm. Like, so she's got three very... I wouldn't say emotionally needy children, but I've obviously like relied on her. And like, I always would find it so interesting, like through a whole day of work, we would all individually call her and be like, hey, this is what's going on in my life. This is my problem. Take mm-hmm. it on, help us deal with it and move on. I think just to be like that support mechanism for the people around you and really genuinely listen and um, provide either solutions or just be there, there to listen, I think is a really great skill. Um, and just to help people work work through their problems. Um, is is really massive and then dad has just always been um, like I've modeled a lot of like my career choice and and things like that after him Um, and just being like the epitome of what I would like look up to as like a successful male so like you know great family values um, like emotionally strong and resilient but still like vulnerable um, and just yeah I could not fault the man even if I tried oh that's so special you'll yeah. have to snip it that the conversation I'll send it to them. yeah, yeah. Oh, I'll, I'll just send them the link and like if they get this far, far through it i know you know they're real yeah. <laughs> their credit though they have listened to the podcast so they, they've done great with that yeah they must be so proud of you hey with the yeah. past episodes they've, they've done they're, they're yeah they're happy it's great oh well more to come hey this is just yeah started just started yeah. exactly yeah lots lots to conquer in our lifetimes for sure last question cam yeah. i have loved loved interviewing you you're just radiating you. energy and yeah. yeah perfect guess perfect guess thank you okay last question how have you how has the podcast been received the betterment project so this is regarding helping yeah. others of course. that's the intent behind you starting this project yeah. so the feedback you've received and how has it helped people so far I think, like, again, this kind of re- re- um, circles back around to, like, where I'm feeling loved. Just, like, the mm-hmm. fact that people have taken time out of their day to listen to it, step one is, like, insane because, like, I feel like we've built up a really good network and a really good group of just supportive people. And, like, mm-hmm. like they're, like, half an hour, hour long episodes. So the fact that someone's taken that portion of their day to, like, listen to us talk is insane. Mm-hmm. And then the next step of them to reach out and say, like, you know, we've loved it. It's been really, really great to listen to. It's been, like, phenomenal. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, I think it's just just the whole process of it has been just really rewarding. Like, obviously, we're still learning as we're doing it. We're learning from each other. Um, if people can can take away from that and, and learn something or just even enjoy it and come along with the journey mm-hmm. um, would be phenomenal. I think it's great because cause we're still really um, grassroots. Like, we know that every person that's listening one of us knows them and they're listening to that to support us Mm -hmm. and i think once it kind of um you know picks up and reaches a greater audience and people are listening to it that don't know us um and are still getting value from it and and uh, choosing to listen and support us would be yeah the the end goal would be amazing Mm -hmm. i'm so confident that that is going to come very soon yeah it is such a valuable podcast so whoever may be listening to this three interview series definitely check it out and that wraps us up cam how do you feel Uh, after answering these questions about yourself how's this experience been for you no i think it's great and like like i said like to to take the opportunity to get to know someone better like i really value because obviously you're you're learning from it and you're Mm -hmm. um putting time and effort into a project that you can be really proud of at the end of the day which like I ultimately respect because like you're pouring like your time your effort like your creativity your love it in, into this project and it, it's going to be on youtube forever and yeah. you always have to look back at it and, and look it's almost like a mental journal like of where you were at this point in time in life absolutely it's so yeah. special it, for me it's like become a part of my foundation that yeah. i want to do five episodes a month for the rest yeah. of my life yeah so i'll be like 90 and i'll still be pumping out nine so <laughs> yeah. I've been yeah. Like, yeah, I feel like 
wow, if I meet all of these inspiring people in Cairns, what yeah. if I can replicate that and I meet inspiring people in like yeah. Dallas, Texas? Yeah, right? wherever. It's everywhere. There's inspiring people all over yeah. the world. So I want to, yeah, just use this opportunity to give people the opportunity to share their stories and learn more yeah. about them. And it's just such a win-win. So Yeah, and it's just it, I, I, the end of the day like from a social aspect like you're still mm. gaining so much from it I um, love it. yeah and i hope you are as well like yeah I no, 100 percent. It was really, I, guess, I was so so tired i've had the biggest day the second we jumped on the call just pick up ready to go <laughs> and then ready to go and do it so, i'm definitely trying to channel that extroverted energy into my yeah. life cam thank you again you're a legend you're absolutely killing it keep inspiring people can't wait for the next Betterment project app. And it. I'll see you in a couple of months when I get back to Cairns at my housewarming. I'm not wait. Thank you very much for um, having me today and all the best. Of course. Have a great night. Bye. Thanks, bye.